collapse after a crosswalk crash. The car slamming into a grandma and a three-year-old in a stroller on the sidewalk. Very scary, as you can imagine. This morning, we're hearing from a group of DPW workers who were nearby when this happened. They saw what happened. And Kim Lucy joins us now, raced right over to help rescue them. That's right, Chris, lending more than a helping hand there. They actually lifted up that car to get the three-year-old out from underneath. A grandmother pushing her three-year-old granddaughter in a stroller hit by a car as they were about to cross the street, trapping the child under the car. No words to say. You're talking about an infant or a child. It happened on Chandler Street in Worcester Wednesday morning. These DPW workers were driving to a job when they say the red car stopped at the crosswalk to allow the pair to cross. The silver car behind it didn't stop in time. It hit the red car and then veered off, hitting the woman and the toddler. And the car behind that car didn't stop. It just went right up in the air, right into them. The impact pulled the child right underneath the car, and that's when the Worcester City workers jumped into action. My partner and I, Jay, he, he said, uh, let's lift. We lifted and pushed, cut the car off, and uh, one of the other guys grabbed the, the baby from underneath. It wasn't something I'd want to see again. I'm the one who called 911 when they jumped out of the car to assist as much as they could. Police say both grandma and the toddler have broken legs and were taken to the hospital. Left behind was a child's bent and broken stroller, the crosswalk sign that was knocked to the ground, as well as the little girl's pink t-shirt and snacks. But it appears everyone will be okay, thanks in big part to these quick-acting Worcester DPW workers in the right place at the right time. It's just a reaction, you know? It is. It's really something that anybody would do. You just did second nature. Well, thank goodness they were there to react the way they did. No charges have been filed in that crash at this time. In the newsroom, Kim Lucy, 7 News, Today in New England. Breaking news, the Pope issuing a new law ordering all Catholic priests and nuns to report sexual abuse and cover-ups to the church. The Pope says this law will provide whistleblower protections for those making the reports, and it will also require dioceses across the world to set up a confidential system to receive those claims and also sets a preliminary standard for investigations. It's the Pope's latest response to the sex abuse scandal that has devastated the credibility of the Catholic Church. Now to the day's other top stories on your Thursday morning. A Methuen police officer rushed to the hospital after being exposed to a dangerous drug. Police say that the officer was searching a suspect when the man ripped open a bag full of a white powdery substance, which they believe to be fentanyl. The officer and the suspect were both rushed to the hospital where they were treated and released. Now, the suspect is in police custody this morning. And the legal battle over the Mueller report is heating up. A vote in the full House on the recommendation to hold Attorney General William Barr in contempt of Congress could happen as early as next week. The House Judiciary Committee voted in favor of it on Wednesday because Barr refused to release an unredacted version of the report. President Trump invoked executive privilege over the Mueller report right before that vote yesterday. Yesterday. And the Red Sox are set to be honored by President Trump today. They'll be honored at the White House for their World Series win last fall. Several players and manager Alex Cora have said that they will not attend. Cora's decision is based on how his home island of Puerto Rico is still struggling to recover after it was hit by a hurricane two years ago. One person was injured when they were hit by bricks that were falling off of a building in Roxbury. There's some of those bricks, police say that the loose bricks on the side of front facade fell and then hit that person. That person wasn't seriously hurt, but the building on Harrison Avenue is open as they look to make those repairs. Happening today, the president of the auto auction in Billerica, where five people were killed two years ago, is due in court. He's being charged with five counts of manslaughter after this crash in 2017. Prosecutors say the company's president is responsible for failing to take appropriate actions that could have prevented that crash. An elderly employee lost control of an SUV plowing into a group of people before driving through a concrete wall. The driver who was driving with an expired license was never charged. That's because state law allows you to drive on private property even without a license. Passengers on board an MBTA bus sent running when their bus goes up in smoke. Take a look. It happened on Com Ave in Brighton. On Wednesday afternoon, the engine started smoking, and then the passengers, many of them students at Boston Latin, had to evacuate. The students were then put on another bus. There's a food fight that continues in Warwick, Rhode Island, where school officials have put a controversial school lunch policy on hold. The school department said on Wednesday its plan was to serve only cold sandwiches to students with outstanding lunch debt. 
and it will now not go into effect as planned. That decision comes after there was national backlash and outrage from parents who called this new policy lunch shaming. Now, the school committee said, with this policy, we seek to find the balance between being fiscally responsible and ensuring that all students are provided with a healthy, nutritious lunch. Warwick School says it's currently owed about $77,000 in lunch debt and says it's grateful for people offering donations to help out, and it's now working with attorneys to make sure that accepting donations is lawful. We're following more news today. The Los Angeles Police Department discovering an alarming arsenal. So more than 1,000 guns were seized from a home. And you can see them all laid out there. Tools and equipment to manufacture firearms were also found. Police searched the house after receiving a tip that the homeowners were selling and manufacturing illegal firearms. One man was arrested. Turning to the president's agenda now on this Thursday, where China's top negotiator is expected to attend trade talks in Washington later today. China says it will retaliate if President Trump goes ahead with his threat to increase Chinese tariffs. The president is planning the increase because he says trade talks are moving slow and claims China is backtracking on earlier agreements. Explosive concerns leading to lawsuits against the makers of popular cooking sprays. At least eight people are suing ConAgra brands. They say that they were severely hurt when cans of Pam cooking spray exploded in their kitchens. A woman in New York was badly burned when she says a can exploded on her last month. She spent a month in the hospital and had to undergo several surgeries. So in a statement, ConAgra Brand says, quote, when Pam is used correctly as instructed, it is a 100% safe and effective product. Coming up next here on the news station, a sick girl. She was denied health care coverage because... The insurance provider said they thought she was dead. Seven investigates this medical mix-up. And then take a look at this. The Bruins with some fierce new portraits in black and white as they gear up for the hurricanes and they come with a twist. And what the name of the newest royal baby means. We'll tell you the meaning behind the name when we come back. Quite a bit of sunshine out there right now. That means temperatures will continue to warm up after a cool start this morning. We will track some rain ahead of the forecast. Still going to be a slow commute out there, especially on 93. Plus, I'm tracking a crash in Burlington. Details in a bit. The only place to watch Family Feud in prime time is Channel 7, weeknights at 8. My mother 